Okay, last time we covered the the uh, carry-on bag. Yeah, the carry-on. So now we're going to do these check-on bags and what you should put them in, what you should take. We're going to show you the bags first, and then we'll reset up and show you what the what uh, all the things we put in are. Anyway, your bags, you want roller bags. You definitely want roller bags um, anytime you're going through an airport. And if you, if you haven't traveled much, then you may not know that. But if you've traveled any at all, you'll know that. And uh, the handles, the, the pull-out handles that are on them, um, up here on the top, uh, we like them. They're uh, makes it a lot easier to get your bag around. But anyway, a lot of guys like a hard-sided case. It's uh, like a hard plasticky yeah. stuff, but it's got an internal lock. What you have to watch out about that internal lock is it has to be TSA acceptable. They have to be able to open your bag. If not, they may pry your bag open. They may pull it off and not ship it you may get stuck with no bag in Africa because you've got a bag. So make sure that whatever locking case, and Pelican makes some, and some other companies like that to make a hard-sided case, which will protect your stuff a little better, but every time I go to Africa with one of those, it seems like everything gets crammed into the, the end of the case or the one side of the case by the time I'm there. It doesn't really hurt anything, it just happens. But anyway, we've been using this as a Cabela's bag. Uh, they don't make them anymore. Um, it's a big, it's a big duffel bag, and uh, oh, another thing in South Africa, you cannot take a duffel bag. It has to be a hard bottomed, it has to be a hard bottom bag, one side flat and hard, and uh, otherwise they won't let it go through the airport, and they're going to pull it off, and you're going to have a bigger problem. But these are a Cabela bag. Um, they're very durable. This one's been to Africa five times. Five times. Five times. Going on six. Going on six and it is a good durable bag and it has buckles on top of it and for whatever the reason i don't know if tsa doesn't like that but they don't like them doing all them buckles and so they they just kind of let my bag go without now this bag here doesn't have them buckles and they check it every time yeah um and this is the same kind of bag it's got a hard bottom it's uh uh yep. lots of compartments in it. diana likes lots of compartments in her bag um this one is mainly just a big bag with a hard bottom and a couple of pockets on the sides and and uh, one one kind of a false bottom in the, in the bag in the bottom that you can get into. So from there, anything is durable enough to make that trip. It doesn't really take a lot. That, I haven't really had that many problems. We haven't had that many no, problems with, with, that, with that happening. Mm -hmm. But make sure it is a durable bag. Make sure you go with good quality stuff one way or another. It's a hard side completely or whether it's a bag like this or whether it's a bag like this. Make sure it's got kind of a hard side. Um, next thing is I want to talk about is make sure... Um, that you put your tags on the outside of your bag in a place where they're not going to grab them. Like if you put it on the handle and they're going to grab that handle, more than likely you're going to be missing a tag by the time you get to Africa. It's going to be gone. Uh, and that can cause identification problems and things at the airport. But have them where they're not going to be in a, in a place that's going to get ripped off or whatnot. And make sure they're on a short, make sure they're not just flopping around on a four inch long, long, uh, thing like kind of like the inside of this one is yeah. kind of that way it's kind yeah. of it's kind of that way with the but it's on the inside and yeah. we'll cover that here in a minute and other than that on the bag you're pretty good to go but make sure your tags on the outside if you use a travel agent typically they will send you these rubberized vinyl with a uh, luggage tag for you for about three or four bags usually they'll yeah, send them usually and typically on a flight international flight you can have uh two bags each that are 50 pounds I'm not speaking for every airline, but most airlines. Every airline I've ever been on mm -hmm. um, has been that way, two 50-pound bags. So you can take a lot of stuff in them and uh, just make sure you have the tags for them. And then make sure you can identify it. Mine has, I got little pipe cleaners that I take, and uh, I put them on the zippers. I put them in different places. You can use blaze orange flagging. Make sure you can identify your bag for everybody else's because I guarantee you, somebody oh, yeah. has the same exact bag on the same exact time that yep. you were there they do um it happened to us yes it did on in 17. in 2017 i went to get my bag and um here it came up the carousel 
And I'm like, oh, okay, there's my bag, cool. And about time it got halfway back over to me, guy grabs it and takes off with it. And uh, he was just rolling down the airport like he's having a good old time. So I run him down and I said, hey, man, you've got my bag. And uh, he says, no, I don't have your bag, this is my bag. I thought, like, well, does your bag have a, a, a pink travel with gun tag on it? And does it have a yellow pipe cleaner and a blue pipe cleaner on it? And he goes, well, no. Well, you've got my bag. Right. That could have been a big problem if he took off with my bag and I wasn't there and realized it. So right. get to that baggage as fast as you can, which sometimes can be a problem, but get there as fast as you can. That way there's no mistakes made with something like that. Somebody run off your bag. Who knows where he was going? Oh, yeah, yeah. And who knows how we'd have settled that because we were going uh, to Port Elizabeth right. the next day. Who knows if we'd ever even figured that out. Yeah. And make sure your tags have your cell phone uh, number on it that you have with you and make sure it has an email with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way if something like that did happen, that guy mm -hmm. can get a yep. hold of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so from there... Um, I guess some of the general things that I take in the bag, we'll cover everything like clothes and things here in a minute, but the general things I take in a bag, um, I always haul uh, extra pair of boot laces. Um, I always take electrical ties. You don't know when a strap's going to break. You don't know when a tag's going to come off. Mm -hmm. You don't know if your, your carry-on bag's going to have a problem. Right. And uh, then I also take a bunch of these different colored pipe cleaners for just what we were talking because, about, yeah. just to mark them. And then I use them to shut my zippers. Mm -hmm. I pull my zipper shut and I put them through there. TSA will remove them. Yeah. Um, if they want to get in your bag, they will take the time to remove them. But, but that's another thing. And then I, I take like a, a rubber band or two just for who knows if I need it. And uh, then I take a little knife. I'm not a guy that's a knife guy and a gun guy. Guns and knives are just tools to me. So it doesn't matter to me if it's a big fancy knife that Uncle John made for me and I got to pack it to Africa. I'm not that kind of guy. And uh, I've never had a use for a knife in Africa yet in five trips. Nope. Um, but I did give some to some Skinners. Yeah. yeah I gave some yeah, knives to some Skinners when I give a whole handful of knives to Skinners. Mm -hmm. And all they are is these little Dexter knives that they're sharp as a razor blade. They sharpen really fast. That's the only knife I take to Africa with me. And uh, then I take, uh, um, for me, and we'll get into that too on the next video, I take some bungee type cords with me. And the only thing I use them for is sometime um, I can take and put this bag on top of my gun case, which is also a roller. Yep. And that way I can bungee that onto the top. My, my gun case has little D rings on it and this bag can be put on it. And I use that them bungees to put this on top of it. Now I'm dragging one thing instead of dragging this one and right. dragging the other one. And, mm -hmm. and, but anyway, like I say, you get 50 pounds, typically, uh, 50 pounds, uh, two bags each. And I take, a, I take our guns and a bag, and then she takes one bag. We, we hardly ever take. We've never taken uh, yeah, two bags. Yeah, we've never taken two no, bags on uh -uh. your end, have we? No, uh, -uh. uh So that kind of covers what the, unless there's something else we're thinking of, um, make sure, that's another thing, make sure that the inside of your bag somewhere has a little pouch or something like this that has all your info in it, mm -hmm. your um, itinerary, where you're going to be, um, your phone number, your cell, because if everything gets ripped off the outside of this, if somebody opens your bag at the airport or trying to find out who you are, this will be on the inside of it so it can't get ripped off. And we actually put um, an itinerary in there that says that on this day we're going to be in Johannesburg, the next day we're going to be in Port Elizabeth, the next day we're going to be at this hunting outfit, and this is their, their, hunting, right. their uh, hunting camp out, uh, info. And anyway, that way, if your bag does get lost, if they open your bag, it's way easier to identify who you are and where you're going to go. And when you get this all loaded up and you get your little pipe cleaners on if you want to do that, or your tapes or whatever you put on your bag so you can identify it easier, take a picture of it with your cell phone you're taking to Africa. Because if something happens to your bag and it disappears, the first question, and this happened to us, one, the first question out of their mouth is, what does your bag look like? Well, it's green got, and it's got handles on it. That could be a thousand bags. Uh, so anyway, I like the cell phone picture of it. That way I just show them the picture up and say, this is my bag. This is what it looks like. And that'll, that'll, that could save you a lot of headache um, for identifying a bag. We've only lost one bag for one day right. uh, at one time, and that was on the way home. Yeah. So. But uh, that was the first question on the first person we asked and the second person we asked about our, how to get our bag back. They, that was their question. Right. What does your bag look like? Yep. 
So anyway, just keep that in mind, and, and uh, now we'll get on to the uh, uh, clothes and stuff that we put in these bags. Okay, so now we got everything kind of laid out here, and, and don't think this is a golden rule of everything that you have to take or don't have to take. If you've got a hat that's your favorite hat that, that Grandma Betty knitted for you, and that's your favorite hat in yeah. the world, take yeah. your favorite hat in the world. Yeah, why not? It's completely up to you. And uh, But there are some things that most camps do laundry, um, if not every day, every other day. We've been to one camp that did it every other day. Other day Everybody yeah. else did it every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just make sure you got enough clothes to make it for a couple of days. And if you're somebody that has a bad problem with socks, take more socks. If you, if you, if you get lots of chiggers in your socks, or your feet sweat really bad, or you're, or you're hunting somewhere in Africa, or your feet are wet all the time, right. take more socks. Mm -hmm. Um, so don't take this as a golden rule. Kind of use common sense when you go to pack all this stuff and think about right, it. Right. That way you get the right thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess what I'll start with is, is when you take your guns to Africa, and you don't have to take a gun to Africa, you can rent them. Yeah. We never have. We always, I've used Outfitters guns when I'm there. Mm -hmm. And I have to say I do prefer my own firearms. I'm familiar with them. I know how they shoot and I know what they are. Yeah. Um, so we, you want to keep that in mind. And one of the things that you want to do when you go to Africa is you want to take a a gun case and it's just got to be a, a little a little flimsy these are what 10 bucks or yeah, something, something at like, like that, yeah. sportsman's warehouse or something mm -hmm. and there you just need them to protect your gun when you're in the you know, got them in the rack in the back of the truck or you're in the back seat or whatever and so you can put your gun in these sometimes and put them in some gun cases uh, mine mine can do that but I don't like it and uh, so I take the the gun cases and what I do is I, I roll them up like this and uh, I put a rubber band around them, and that way they're compact and in my my case, and they're they're they don't take up that much room. I guess no, they're probably really. about the biggest thing I pack though is individually though. Yeah, right. But but that way you have a, a light gun case. Um, like I say, it doesn't have to be a big, heavy, giant, expensive forty dollar, hundred dollar case. You, these are like I swear I swear they're ten, twelve dollars. Yeah, something like that. Something yeah. like that. And we've taken them all the time, and they they seem to do really well. But anyway, that's that's your gun case. The other thing I want to talk about right now is your binoculars. I've always taken my binoculars in my check-on bag. Mm -hmm. Could they get stolen? Yes. Could they get broken? Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, it hasn't happened to me yet. If they will fit in your gun case, that's probably the safest place for them because it's locked and it's locked and only openable by you. You can't put TSA locks on it. We'll cover that in the next video. Yep. But if they'll fit in your gun case, I highly recommend you put them in your gun case. Right. Um, but a lot of times mine don't, and so I have to end up putting them in my checked on bag. Like I said, I've never had a problem. They've never been broken. They've never been lost uh -huh. or stolen or anything like that. But if you want to play it on, especially if they're expensive binoculars. Mm -hmm. um, if they're a, a few hundred dollar binoculars, then... They get stolen, they get stolen. But if you've got a set of Leica range finding binoculars that are 2,500 bucks, right. that's a whole different story. And if you do have them kind of binoculars, make sure that you go somewhere and get them insured. Because if they disappear, mm -hmm. right. then you then you have a, a problem. And I I did put mine in my in my carry-on one year and they checked me. Yes. So Yeah, it adds a lot of weight to your yeah, carry-on. And, and they do yeah. pull you aside every time yep. you go through security yep. to see what they I don't know why they can't see I binoculars on. I don't know either. But I remember that. Yeah, you yeah, did that. I and did. It, was, it was nothing but a pain in your butt. Yeah, so, so I, But I a lot of guys do that. Right. A lot of guys take them yeah. in. A, oh, yeah. a lot of guys take them in, mm -hmm. a, you know, like that. So next, um, I guess, I don't want to talk, just take a ball cap um, with you, and we'll, we'll, there's a knit cap too, a knit hat, wherever it's at. Um, right here. But anyway, um, depending on where you're going, like if, if you're going to Mozambique and hunting with 117, this knit cap probably is pretty much worthless to you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if you're going down to the Karoo, uh, last year in July, the Karoo for the first time in years had snow. Yeah. Did. And uh, they have a tendency to get rain. We got rained on a couple times during the Karoo a few years ago. Yeah, we did. And anyway, so we take a hot, and if you do any night hunting. You're going to need it. You're going to need it because it, it may only be 40 degrees out, but if you're in the back of a truck with a spotlight for four or five hours, yep. it gets cold. So we take a knit cap like that. We take a ball cap like that. If you like your cowboy hat, if you like yeah, whatever hat you whatever like. Whatever you like to wear. Just take whatever hat you want and it's going to work for you. Like mm -hmm. I say, it's common sense. And most people that go to Africa are hunters, mm -hmm. uh, so that's not a problem. We also take a neck gaiter um, like this. You put it over top of your neck, you can pull it up over your face. Sometime in really dusty situations in Africa, in the back of that truck, um, these are a godsend to keep all that dust off your face and out of your nose. And, and plus at night hunting again. Oh, yeah. if, it, if it's cold, man, one time in the yeah. Limpopo in 2018, 
Man, it was cold. Oh, it was. It was like 28, 30 degrees at night out there night hunting, and it was cold. So we had a lot of we had a lot of this kind of stuff that kept us yeah, we did. Uh, kept us good there. And then uh, uh, next thing I do is I take a pair of shooters gloves, and I like shooters gloves in Africa, and I think these are Berettas or something, Bob Allen's or something. I don't know. But anyway, they fit extremely tight. Yeah, I can get really them on my tight. pockets. I can open my wallet. Mm -hmm. I can use my binoculars. I can use the safety on my gun. Mm -hmm. um, they're just a tight, tight-fitting gun. They will not keep you warm. No. Uh, but they're a good shooter glove. Because when you're walking around, stalking something, and you reach out, I have a tendency to reach out and grab branches and things that are going to slap me in the yeah. face. And uh, if you do that with a bare hand, with the thorns in Africa, that gets to where it's kind of oh. painful after a while. Yeah. And uh, so I like these because I don't have that problem. They're made of leather. Real thin leather, but it stops thorns and stuff from going through them. And uh, you'd be glad you have them. Yep, you'd be glad you have them. So anyway, we take uh, four. I take, and you take four yeah, pair four of socks pair, yeah. mm -hmm. um, because we wear a pair down, right? And then that gives us five, five pair, pair of socks right there. And they do the laundry yep. every day, so that gives me a, basically a change of socks twice a day. Yeah. If I know, which I never do. No. Um, you know, one pair of socks does me fine. My feet don't sweat. My mm -hmm. feet don't get sore. I got tough feet. Yeah. And uh, they and we've never really hunted where they get really soaking wet, maybe damp, but no. I've never got wet feet in Africa. I've never rush, had a problem but, with my socks. Uh, and that in South Africa especially. Yeah. But, but uh, and then uh, a pair of a pair of hikers. I like hikers in Africa. I don't like a full boot. You may like a full boot. Take a full boot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, these are uh, Solomon's. They're kind of a, a pricey, not for nowadays pricey. I bought these ten years ago. They they were two hundred and some bucks ten years ago. Um, now. People spend three, four hundred dollars on boots, and they mm -hmm. don't think anything of it. Right. And uh, but anyway, make sure that you use these before you go. Hike in them and hike in them and hike in them and hike in them. Wear them to the grocery store. Wear them to the gas station. Wear them to grandma's house. Whatever you're gonna do, be sure and wear them because if you get a shoe that bothers you and you're in Africa walking around, it's a problem. Oh yeah. Um, if it rubs a blister on you, which I don't get blisters, but I've had friends that get mm -hmm. blisters bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do not want to have that ruin your whole trip or dictate what kind of you know, misery you're in while you're hunting. Right. And, uh, but these ones here, like I said, I've had them for 10 years. I'm starting to wear them out. I'm starting to wear the treads out on them. So it might be their last trip to Africa. But, but uh, I prefer a lower cut one. If you're going to wear shorts, uh, like cutoffs, uh, if it's warm enough, then you're going to want to find some sort of a gaiter that, that covers these because the stickers mm -hmm. and stuff in Africa go right down your in your shoes and half time you can't even get them out it's like yeah. almost toss your socks away yeah uh, so anyway your boots are, are what's comfortable at home wear them in mm -hmm. and i'm being and then saying that wear all your clothes in if well, you yeah. buy pants mm -hmm. yeah shirts you, you buy brand new pants make sure you wear them a lot a lot yeah um just like i had a shirt the other day here i bought that i put on and it took it about four or five hours and pretty quick right here in the crotch of the neck. Mm -hmm. It was poking me and sticking me and rubbing me. My neck turned red. Oh, yeah. It make sure bad. you know that before you go to Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you wear that stuff. Um, wear it hunting if you can before you go to Africa. Wear it to the store or whatever you're going to do. Yep. Um, and that'll kind of cover them. And then for around camp, it doesn't matter. Um, like I said in the last video, we showed to wear slip-ons mm -hmm. on the airplane because it saves a lot of headache and trouble. Yeah. And so for camp, either wear them slip-ons or take a set of these like thongs flip flops with you yep. and uh, uh slippers, slippers would work, whatever. it doesn't matter yeah. but it, it's something with a hard bottom on it there's a lot of things that poke you in africa when you walk around mm -hmm. and so make sure that you have something around the fire that's comfortable so you're not wearing your hunting boots around right. the fire and, right. and and doing that kind of thing yep. and uh so then one of the things i also take to africa is this is a this is a shooter's uh type vest it's a hunting vest uh, I think it's made by Tag Safari, and I think it's got uh, Safari Club International's logo yeah, logo on so, it. Yeah. It's got tons of pockets, mm -hmm. and I like it because I, nice. I go hunting during the day. It's good in the morning, helps to keep warm, and I, I take a lot of camera gear. Yep. So I put tons of batteries, camera cards, um, anything and everything, toilet paper, anything yeah, whatever, you can think yeah. of, I put in these pockets when I, mm -hmm. uh, when I go. But anyway, you might consider a shooting vest like that. Uh, I really I take mine every time Diane has one oh, too, yeah. Yeah. and we're not showing you what we take for both of us. We're just kind of it's kind of a combo of what we take. Yeah. Um, this would be like one person stuff, but she does have some stuff here too. But. So other than that, then uh, other than the pants I wear, and if you remember right in the other video, we talked about how if you take. Uh, pants to at what you wear on the airplane to Africa right. make sure they're huntable in oh, yeah. in case this stuff doesn't show up in your bag yeah. then that way you have um, 
a pair on you that you can wear out hunting. You don't yep. want to wear your finest pants and then get down and go, oh, my bag disappeared and I don't have any pants to hunt in. Right. These pants will, will actually yeah, just make save sure your you life can... that are on you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, I them are Diane's pants there. I I like this color, this greener, this kind of green color. A lot of guys wear too light of stuff. If you hear any complaint out of an outfitter or a guide or something in Africa, it's because somebody's wearing something that's too light, light. colored. Mm -hmm. And it does show. I've seen people like on videos and stuff and they just stand out like a sore thumb. Um, these green ones here don't have cargos um, in them. It's got side pockets that zip, which I like. Um, and this is the same pants I travel in when I when I get on the airplane. Mm -hmm. and that's the same ones I take to hunt. So I take I take a two pair of pants, and I wear a pair. So that gives me three pair. Right. And I I'm a kicker for not wanting stuff in my pants. I don't like wallets and keys and money and things like that in my pants pocket. Diane's I like it all in my shirt. Diane's right. the opposite. Yeah. She likes everything in her pants and nothing yeah. in her shirt. And in fact, I take these cargos. That all they you know they got the main back pockets they got the front pockets and then they got these cargos so i can actually fit a little camera in there if i want to take that for convenience or whatever and then i can put whatever else in the other side i really like them and the material is really flexible and they're super comfortable so yeah and that's another thing too comfortable talking yeah. about that wearing again yep. and make sure they are quiet yeah uh, quiet they, pants are the only way mm -hmm. to go yep um and i my favorite pants for Africa um, are these Wrangler ATG. They're all terrain gear. They have a slightly flexible waist on them. Mm -hmm. And I think I said that in the other, in the other video about when you wear them on the airplane, they're very comfortable. But they are quiet. Um, they're slim. They don't have like a, a wide bottom on the belt that, that when you walk goes right. like that when you walk. And uh, so just be sure your pants that you like them. Make sure they're a darker, yeah. darkerish kind of mm -hmm. color, not black or something, but just make sure they're a dark, lay to the darker side. Yeah. And uh, make sure that you have three pair of them. Wear one and yeah. take two. If you don't feel comfortable with that, take another pair. Yeah. You've got 50 pounds. This stuff yeah. here is nowhere oh, yeah. near 50 take, pounds. Oh, this yeah. stuff here would probably be about 30 pounds in, the, in them bags probably, that we just showed yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So you can throw more stuff in there. And mm -hmm. there's nothing worse to get to Africa, which we did one time, our second trip to Africa, right. and not have what you need to get it yeah. done. We didn't have enough uh, warm clothes. We, we didn't realize how cold it was going to be where right. we went. And uh, we didn't have enough warm clothes when we got mm -hmm. there. So if you think you need it, yep. uh, kind of do a study, ask your outfitter what the weather's mm -hmm. typically like like there, and then uh, go from that route. Yep. And that brings me to a, a, like a heavy coat. Um, like we're going to the Karoo um, here in July, and like I said, they got snow there before. Well, you're going to want a heavy coat. Yeah. And so bring you a heavy coat or something that you can put on that, that keeps you very warm. Mm -hmm. And uh, take you a light raincoat. Um, this is my camo raincoat. Um, it's nice and light, but it keeps me dry if there's a rainstorm. Which in the Karoo, we've had that happen to us before. Oh, yeah. and especially that misty, yeah. misty rain. Yeah. But anyway, that should do it for your coats. Um, we also take, we usually pack that with us, like a light coat like this one here yeah. from Swift Dip. It's just a light travel coat. I also take, we also take a light coat like that with us. And, and then um, I take three pair of underwear with me, plus I'm wearing a pair, that's four. And uh, you can take more if you want to. If you think you need a new pair of underwear every day, take 10 pair of underwear. As yeah. um, long as you can fit it in, as long as you're not past your weight, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, four or five pair, because like I say, they do your, they do your laundry every, every uh, day most places or every yeah. other day. And the only other thing I'll say about what you take down for clothing is make sure that anything that's not made of a cotton or a wool or something like that doesn't get washed by a lot of camps now uh, still use an iron yeah and yeah. when they use an iron on your something that's uh, like my long uh, underwear shirt here it will melt it mm -hmm. and yeah, so it make sure it's a cotton uh base or like this i just keep it out i just i just make sure they can't get their hands on it and wash it and if it gets too skanky i just wash it myself and yeah. hang it up in the in, in the, the room. room yeah i just wash it in the sink mm -hmm. and that so i guess that would bring me to my long sleeve we take a long a long underwear this is like a cabela's long underwear i never take bottoms no, we never have. No, we always take uh -huh. a top. But uh, that way, if you need it, you need it. And like I say, night hunting, things like that yeah. make this re these are really nice yeah, at night. Yeah, they are. You'd think when it's 80 degrees during the day that you wouldn't need a long underwear right. at night. But, but they sure keep you warm at night in the back of that truck. Yep. And I even take this heavier thermal that you can put on over a t-shirt or whatever because I just get so cold. And then that way, you're going to be nice and cozy if you take that. Thermal, and that, that heavier, and that's that kind of like a that's kind of like the old long underwear. Yeah, the it cotton. is. It is. It's like yeah. the mm -hmm. the heavier, the, the right. heavier cord. Uh, yeah. 
yeah. corrugated, whatever, whatever you want to call oh, it. Yeah, I don't whatever know. you call it. I don't know what you want to call waffle it. Waffle knit. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know what it is. But. And then for your, your uh, depending on where you're at in South Africa, I mean, it's different. It's different from one end of South Africa to the other end of South Africa. Make sure you know what you're getting into for clothes. You may need more cl warm clothes. You may need more cold clothes. Right. Um, so make sure you have that, that uh, done where you can wear shorts. But uh, yeah. a lot of guys take, I, I take them every time. I've taken... I've taken uh, uh, cutoffs like this mm -hmm. um, every time I go to Africa. Yep. I've never worn. I wore mine in in seventeen when we it was hot. Crew. It, it was, was ninety hot some here. degrees, yeah, and I did, not, wear yeah, did wear them. Not uh, not hunting, but I wore them in camp. Right. And then speaking of in camp, um, yeah, sweats. Um, it's kind of nice. Go after you go on a hunt, you you go to your room, take a shower, yeah. mm -hmm. put your sweats on, and then uh, man, it's 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 kind of nice for. For having something like that, that's that's uh, Diane wears hers almost every night. Yeah, I do. Um, just for lounging around the fire, or whatever. Yep, just for be, lounging. Be comfy. Yep, and then sometime that one year uh, in the Limpopo, it was getting so cold at night. Of course, there's no heat in them rooms at all. Mm, right. And uh, what was nice is we slept in our sweats. Yes, we did. Just to stay warm. Yep. So you never know. Yeah, you never know. Then uh, uh, shirts. We'll get into shirts. I like two short sleeve shirts. I, I usually don't take more than two because they're going to wash one of them, mm -hmm. and I'll have the next one. I'll have one the next day, so I, I don't really have an issue with that one way or another with just two. But like I say, it's nothing to throw another one in. And then um, that's a long sleeve one, like the one I have on. That's a shooter's right. a shooter's one. These are nice in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, these are nice in the morning when you get out and go hunting. The first yeah. thing in the morning, it's kind of chilly, chilly a little morning, bit, and, yeah. and uh, that kind of thing. But you can take more of these long sleeve shirts if you want to. Plus, not as heavy a long sleeve shirt. I've got some long sleeve shirts I take that are that are shorter, smaller, right. thinner. These are pretty heavy. These are heavy. These are yeah, heavy. They are. And uh, plus, in your carry on, you have an extra shirt also right. that you can use. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, so that that gives us three T-shirts right, right, to have in right. to have in Africa. So yeah. I'll give you three. I forgot about yeah. that. And um, yeah. Right. Plus we have. Oh yeah, you hoodie. take a you take a hoodie. A hoodie just. Because if it's super cold, I can put that under my raincoat, and it'll keep me super toasty warm, especially like for night hunting, or if I just want to wear it around the fire at night or whatever, you know, it's nice for that too, so. Have I ever taken one? Yeah, you do. Do I wear it? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> I can't ever remember wearing a hoodie. Yeah. But anyway. So that kind of covers the clothes end of it, and like I say, don't, don't think what we're telling you here is the is the, uh, the end all to all this because you can take whatever you want to as long right. as you have enough room for it and you don't mind packing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, it, it's like I tell people, when it comes to anything going to Africa, if you have the space and you don't have the weight requirement restriction uh, bothering you, take as much as you want to. Well, yeah. uh, it just makes your bag a little heavier. Right. Uh, that way, if you get to Africa and you don't use half of what's in your bag, doesn't so what? Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you didn't use half of what was in your bag, no big right. deal. Yeah. And uh, go from there. And then uh, this is the the cosmetic cosmetic bag. bag. Yeah, it's yeah. My that's mine, I think. Yeah, that's yours. That's mine. Yeah. Your toothbrush, toothpaste, all your goodies. Yeah, shaving cream, shaving yeah. blades. Yeah. Um, anything. I put out extra aspirins and deodorants, and, deodorants and yeah, and all that kind of stuff in it, and and right. an extra lip balm. Yeah. Um, right. like we take a lip balm, mm -hmm. like we, we talked extra, about, and we take extra extra sprays and stuff like that. Yeah, anything that you'd use, shampoos, right? Uh, whatever yeah. you would use, make sure you put it in a in a bag like this, so it's not rolling all over yep. in your bag. And typically, we'd put these in a, in your bag. But. Yeah, typically these go in my bag, like a a sunscreen that's got like. 40 or 50 or whatever. Yeah, because that's, like that's like a face lotion. Yeah, it is. It's and like uh, normal lotion. to dry skin, lipiderm. Yeah. And it, it is a, what, 30? Yeah, maybe it's 50. 30. Okay, 50. 50. That's what I was thinking. It's 50. It's a 50 it's really S SPF. It's yeah. an SPF 50. And we put that on in the morning if it's sunshiny and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You can get, you know, it might not even be that warm. It might be like in Namibia. Yep. It never got past 75 degrees, but about three days in, we were starting to look like we were starting to get red. Yeah, that so. sun is way different over it, there. It, it seems like it's hotter yeah, or it burns you more. Make sure or you whatever. protect your face and arms, especially. Yep. So, and then there's this lotion. It's got insect stuff in it. The suntan lotion. Yeah, it's suntan lotion and insect all in one, which it's kind of hard to find, but that is really nice to have. And some of them are nasty smelling. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, uh, they are. We, we usually go through two or three a year mm -hmm. and uh, to find out where they're at. Yeah. But 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 uh, two, if you're going somewhere, um, 
that has bad bugs, like if you're going Zimbabwe yeah. or somewhere like that, it's got tsetse flies and things like that, this stuff won't even, no. uh, it's almost like an invite to dinner for them. Right. Um, it is, it's not going to cut it. Uh, so if you're going to a part of South Africa, uh, which I've never been to that was that bad, but if the bugs and flies and stuff are really bad in that part of South Africa, you may want to consider something like a heavy DEET yeah. um, and, and things like that to keep things good. But this is, yeah, this is a suntan lotion. It's got insect repellent. It. it works for us everywhere we've been. Yeah. But I know guys that have been places where DEET will barely keep the bugs off of them, drive them crazy. Yeah. Um, so just be sure you select that. And any of this stuff you buy, if you've never wore it before, any deodorant, anything like that, mm -hmm. if you've never had it on your body before, right. test it before you go. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, you do not want to get down to Africa and have your, your face swell up because you put something on that's never had and you're allergic to it or mm -hmm. you're having a reaction mm -hmm. to it. So just be careful and make sure that you don't you don't uh, take anything to Africa you haven't tested. Test everything you right. take to Africa. Oh, yeah. And uh, that might be complicating things a little bit, but it seems like it works pretty good. Yeah. So I guess... Uh, we covered everything we need to cover on on that, and don't mm -hmm. we might have forgot something? I don't know, but that's pretty uh -huh. much. Um, you can go on to our uh, outdoor um, Out West Sportsman uh, website, and uh, there's a list. There's a list of all this stuff on there that you can use when you're packing your bags or going. Right. And uh, from there, I guess, uh, well, enjoy, enjoy everything, everything wild. wild.